everybody find yourself a spot and we're going to get started. This is an event organized by the Sundays, so it's uh, a little bit less than perfect in this organization, but we'll all get it done.
to bring her back in our minds. And we're going to have to be a little bit patient because some of us are going to need a pause. Definitely me. But to help us on our little journey, let's just all imagine that we're on our way up the highway. We get just past the drum and monkey. You know what that is, I hope. You look for the for the solar panels and you're turning right there because Jane's having a a get together. You don't really know who's there, how many people. You pull in and there's an awful lot of cars for one person. Mm -hmm. You go in and you look around and there's a lot of people there, but I don't see Jane. She's probably off on her errand. She's got a project that she's almost finished. And maybe she's got to go provide some supervision to some people who are doing a few things that you maybe sit around at a kitchen table and chat for a minute with some people you know and some people you don't. And then you move over to the fireplace and the living room there and sit there for a few minutes and meet a few more people. You look out the window and there's a bunch of kids down at the beach and Lily's shown them how to make s'mores. And then before too long, there's lots of stories that are going to be told about life and about projects that Jane's working on that other people are working on. So I'm going to tell you two really short stories about Jane. The, the first story, I think, is the first story about Jane that's been told and retold. This story takes place when Jane was, I think, about two. Funnily, I had this story in mind, and I went to visit my Uncle Bob yesterday, who was 90, and Uncle Bob started telling the story, same one. Anyway, we all remember Jane as being courageous, always going in her own direction, listening to our advice, not necessarily following it, but getting to a to a pretty good finish line on most projects. So when Jane was two, she had three older brothers, Paul, Mark, me, and one little baby sister, Rose. And uh, it was nap time in the summer afternoon, so Mom put Jane upstairs on Dad and Mom's bed, which was at the front of the house on the second floor. And uh, so Jane could have a nap up there, and Mom probably had to come back downstairs and keep the rest of us from killing each other. And uh, within a few minutes of nap time, Jane kind of decided she didn't need a nap, and the front window was open, so she crawled out and fell down into the garden, down a story and a half below. Mom was probably looking after the rest of us, and no one was aware that Jane had fallen out of a second story window. But uh, within a half hour or so, the paper boy came along with the Sarnia Observer, and he sort of scooped Jane out of the garden, rang the doorbell, and delivered the Sarnia Observer and Jane. <laughs> so she's courageous. She goes sometimes in directions that we think is, seems a bit odd, but it always has a happy ending. Anybody else got a story that they'd like to tell about Jane? Where's one? Green there, green there. You're there. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but we kissed at breakfast, so I think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Dave McCree. I'm uh, Jane's brother in law. Uh, I met Jane 45 years ago. And uh, she, uh, we were at. Uh, friend's house, I was with some buddies playing cards, and she popped by and uh, she was on her way, she was doing what Jane does best, she was helping somebody, she was uh, on her way to uh, uh, bail out a friend's brother from jail, so uh, she said to me and my, my buddy, she said, uh, why don't you come out to my parents' place? And, uh, have a beer. Of course, being 
younger, we couldn't turn that down. So uh, we went out, and uh, she uh, decided to uh, introduce her little sister to a very nice Protestant boy. <laughs> Uh, much to her parents' chagrin, they were away on vacation. <laughs> uh, so, Jane was a very giving person. She, she was very selfless, and uh, uh, I'm going to miss her terribly. Any more stories? Jane was a very kind and trusting individual beyond the back. There was times where I would be at her house and there was her people who rented out her place to stay for a couple nights or like weeks. And she would send me up the mountain with these random strangers who I didn't even know. <laughs> Jane's first cousin. 
Wendy, and this is my husband, Mark. She's a cousin of one. Yeah. <laughs> um, my two sons, we used to come up to the farm up here. That was our vacation with my sons. At the time, they were about 8 and 11. And Jane would just love it. She would show up at the farm and say, I'm taking your boys and I'm going to take them to St. Joe's Island and we're going to learn kayaking lessons. She was just the best babysitter in her life. <laughs> she wasn't a babysitter. But I didn't can't. ask her to do that. She just she did it. it. She loved it. Yeah. She taught them how to make dream catchers, and they still have them to this day. They're now 33 and 36. Um, she, the boys would say, oh, we're going over to Jane's because every day is Christmas Day at Jane's. We get breezies all day long. <laughs> and they just loved Jane as we did too. She was a great cousin and always a pleasure to be around and a lot of fun. And I will miss her for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, just a couple other things. We, we're from Sarnia, and it used to be a big deal for us to come up, because uh, Wendy's parents had a farmhouse right in Warrencliffe here at C Cecil Palmer's old place, and it was Joe and Betty Moore. I don't know if any of you know her, them, but uh, we used to come up for two weeks in the summer, and unreal, just had so much fun. And yeah, Jane would come over and just say, I'm taking the guys for a day. We're going, okay, okay, and then the guys are going, yeah. No mom and dad. And then, you know, so Wendy already explained all that, how much fun it was for them. But uh, we used to go back to her place before the big cottage was built. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Jane had, you talked about projects. She had a lot of them that weren't finished. <laughs> and when, I remember one time we were up, uh, we went down to the, the shoreline, and they had a real small dock there, once again, before the big cottage was there. And Jane had one of the, a green like bass boat kind of thing. It had the, the elevated chairs in it, and they, she had parked it nose in, and there was a big wind coming from the north, and it blew over the transom, and the boat was basically sitting on the bottom of the lake. And she goes, Ah, it's all right, it's all right. We'll get it, we'll get it. And so I, I lifted it. And she's so funny. She's a great. Uh, personal manager, right? <laughs> Mark, if you just get it behind the boat, <laughs> a little bit, I can start bailing it out. <laughs> so we got it above, so it was above the water, and then I go, well, we're going to be here for a week bailing this thing out. And she says, we're not going to bail it all of She says, we're going to go out in the lake, and I'm going to pull the plug out of the back, and we're going to drain it. And I go, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> out we go, ripped around the lake. Sure enough, drained the boat, just sucked all the water out the back, stuck the plug back in. Uh, and that, So that was one story. Another one was, <laughs> we, she had the kid, we had our whole family there again, and she said, we're going to go off the north side of Cummins Lake through the little channel and go pick blueberries over in the, the next door. Like, I don't remember the name of it. Pickerel. Pickerel Lake? Pick 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 okay. Yeah. So we went through this little channel, so we're going through there, and, and Jane's navigating. And I said to Jane, we're not going to make it. She said, mm -hmm. Like we're we're on we're at hitting the ground now, yeah. and she goes, "Well, get out of the boat and push it." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we got through. Kids had a blast. You know, they picked, they picked a whole bunch of blueberries and stuff like that. But that's 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 my great memories of Jane. Was just, you know, do you think maybe you could do this, or can you pull me into the boat, or can you? Do this? <laughs> so yeah, she was a riot. I have, so, yeah. I have one more story. Uh, my son Joel, him and his wife Natasha came up and stayed with Jane and they wanted to use the uh, paddle boat uh, at the cottage. So they get on the paddle boat and they have, I think they had their, his camera with them. Was it the camera or, phone or, or something. A phone or something? So they get over by Big Rock Candy Mountain and leave. Jane didn't tell them that there was a hole in the boat. <laughs> so they're halfway back and they're like, they're sinking, <laughs> and they lost their sunglasses and their bones. <laughs> anyway, they had to get rescued. Jane says, oh, that's okay. You'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, Joel said, it was a memorable trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we got, I'm not trying to hog the show here, but I've got, I've got a bunch of things that people have sent me, and I'm just going to read them at the end of here. Um, this is from uh, Sally and Frank. Is that right? 
would like to add our comments to the family and friends saying goodbye to Jane. We know Jane is a keen photographer, art collector, entrepreneur, general promoter of all the arts, and our main go-to person for information or needs in the Algoma district. Above all, she was a dear friend and a mentor to us. Who is your family? It may not just be the people you're related to by blood. Jane loved her kids and grandkids unconditionally. She was happy when they were happy and rocked for them through many struggles. Jane was so kind and generous and she opened her home to all. She gave her voice to those who were not always heard. We will remain grateful for her friendship, wisdom, and advisement to us regarding our children. This isn't in here, but how many of us have children? Jane would tell us all about what we should do. <laughs> how to raise our children. <laughs> Jane was one of those unforgettable characters whose spirit will be held dear to all who knew her. That's from Sally and Frank in the family. Who's got a story? I have lots of memories of Jane. When they talk, you have to actually point and read it. And okay. It I, well, I, you've got a good story. Yeah, yeah. I made my life doing presentations. Oh, so right. <laughs> uh, we have a cottage about five doors down from Jane. And I, I remember when we first met Jane, of course we've always called her the Chamber of Commerce. She knew everything about everything on the lake. But we decided, we were building a new room, a, a second bedroom and bathroom on our cottage. And it, it, uh, it was our Thanksgiving, the U.S. Thanksgiving, the end of, of November. And we told her we wanted to come and see the work that they were building on the cottage. And we'd stay in with her. And so she said, oh yeah, she had room <laughs> at that time. Well, we're stupid. We're from Texas. You know, we thought... I mean, Thanksgiving for us, we're in a hot tub. <laughs> you know, flew into Toronto, rented a car, and ended up following a snowplow <laughs> into here. I told Jim when we turned off at Iron Bridge, I said, you know, if something happens to this car, they won't find us till spring. <laughs> and we're going to be frozen solid. At any rate, we got to Jane's, and did fine until we hit our driveway and then we got stuck, but that was another story. Jane planned a Thanksgiving, I know your Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving is different than ours, we didn't plan on anything. She had a whole Thanksgiving dinner for us, invited people that she thought we should know around the lake, <laughs> and it was wonderful. That was so typical, Jane. The years that followed, she went on art tours with us because she knew I loved the art tours and always would say, what do you have in your crock pot? Because she knew I had dinner in the crock pot. We had many dinners, many good times. She was always positive and I want her to know I'm still angry with her for dying. So <laughs> This one's a little longer, but it, they're, they're all good. We can add them to the photo album. Well, that, yeah, we'll put them all in the photo album. Mm -hmm. This is from Ann Diamond. Thinking of Jane today, on the morning of her ceremony, and all the reasons I wish I could attend, but I'm so far away. Jane and I met in 2007 at a conference in Connecticut. She drove me all the way to the bus station in Albany, along the Appalachian Trail, and on the way she shared her, our life, we shared our life stories. It seemed life with Jane was one long road trip. Four years later, we drove from Thessalon all the way to Thunder Bay to visit another remarkably brave and unforgettable woman, Lynn Sharman. Jane. Jane lived her convictions more than anyone I've ever met. And her, and Jane lived her convictions more than anyone I've ever met and introduced me to friends and relatives 
who, like her, were fiercely independent doers and actors deeply rooted to their communities across Ontario. In so many ways, Jane was a fixer, a carpenter, a plumber, a Jane of all trades, <laughs> whose commitment to making things right was her daily practice. While immersing herself in people's struggles, she also surrounded herself with the heart-stopping tranquility and beauty of Cummings Lake, where she stood at the hub of her own giant medicine wheel. I can't believe she's gone. I don't believe she is. She left parts of herself in too many places and with too many people, too many good friends whom she chose very wisely. All my relations, that phrase embodies Jane more than any other. May she rest in peace, peace, though I can't imagine her resting for very long. <laughs> From Ann Diamond. The microphone is yours if you'd like it. There we go. I've done that before. Good. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Terry Braverman and my wife Gail. We are, I thought I was going to be the only American speaker, uh, <laughs> but Texas beat me to it. We live three houses from Jane on Cummings Lake, the other way from you, and now we got to meet the people from Texas, so let's get together after. Let me tell you, we've known Jane for 37 years. When we bought on the lake, she was the first one who came to our house before the welcome wagon. I don't know if you know what welcome wagon is. Jane was her own welcome wagon. She came with gifts, and she said, welcome, and what do you need? If you need a resource, if you need to call somebody, just ask me, I'll tell you. And she would. Well, over the years, we shared a lot of interesting stories and and the electricity, when the wires came down between our houses and the Palmers, and she called us up and said, you got to go outside, it's great, there's electricity just shooting all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right. I mean, what about a fire, Jane? <laughs> uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry. <laughs> that was Jane. Don't worry about it. But I have to tell you one story. One night, about 11 o'clock, we get a knock on our cottage door, and normally we'd be in bed. Now, at my age, I'd be in bed. Then I was still up. And there's Jane. And she said, Terry, uh, would you mind helping the folks who are renting at my cottage? I said, well, it's 11 o'clock at night, Jane. She said, well, there's two families there. They have two boys, two teenagers. You guys can relate. And they took one of Jane's boats out. Mistake. Just before dark. And that motor wasn't running too good. No kidding. <laughs> Did Jane ever have a motor that ran well? No. You all know. It, including the lawnmowers. But, all right, I said, so the boys have been missing since, what, four hours? She said, yeah. I have a feeling they're stranded somewhere on Cummings Inn. And would you help these guys, these two fathers, find their sons? Because you just have this new boat you just bought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Jane, for you. So we get powerful flashlights. We get in our boat, and it's so foggy. It's a night of just thick fog. So it, the lights don't penetrate, and these two gentlemen are yelling, Jim! Andy! All the way down the lake. Nothing. You can't see. I don't know if I'm going to run into the Rock Candy Mountain. And we're going slow. We're standing up. We're looking. Nothing. 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 Until we get to the far end, the north end of Cummings, and there's an island. And on the point of the island, one of Mike Carroll's family members had a cottage. Uh, a gal. And she had that weekend brought up two of her nieces. Teenage. Sounds like a disaster. You, you know where this is going. <laughs> Two teenage nieces, and the boys had gotten to the far end to the entrance to Pickerel, and the motor died. They couldn't get it started, so they started yelling for help. Well, okay, so the gal has the camp. She takes her boat over, rescues the boys, brings them back has a campfire with the two teenage girls. They're sitting there eating marshmallows and having a blast, and they don't want to go home. I said, hey, guys, these are your boys. They don't want it. It's gone, boy, Jack. 
<laughs> so I, we tie the boat back on, we haul it back. I said, by the way, in, in the rules, I think, at least in America, if you rescue somebody's boat, it's yours. That's your boat. <laughs> That's your boat, right? Absolutely. Salvage. Well, it was Gene's boat, and I didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, almost done. The point is, we say we salvaged the boys, and they didn't want to be salvaged. They, they wanted to stay at the camp with the girls. We got them back. They thanked me profusely. They went back home to Jane's cabin. And about an hour later, now it's midnight or after, another knock on the door. And there's one of the boys. He said, you know, we, we really want to thank you so much for helping. And we don't have any money. Here's a beer. <laughs> I said, well, thanks. That's really that's funny. That's nice. And that was how we got paid, or I got paid, for the salvaging Jane's borders. But... We, we will miss her. Uh, we all will. She knew nature. She knew people. That's from the heart. She was a good spirit. Thank you. you you've already I, I know. I got the wrong shirt. Well, I'm going to read another one, and then we, 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 we got all, we got lots of time. So this one is from Oh, Jeannie Power, Mark's mom. Many of you know Mark often up here with Jane. So this is from his mom. And she was there in Newfoundland. Um, the one memory that is uppermost in my mind is where Jane and I traveled from Toronto to St. John's with what was affectionately known as the Batmobile. My son Mark was in crisis and needed his car driven to Newfoundland. Jane, as usual, was up for the task, and so we set out on that road trip back in the fall of 2017 and had many adventures along the way. We did this trip a couple of times, and Jane also took the trip with Mark on another occasion. During the fall of 2017, or two, yeah, 2017, they crossed over from North Sydney and encountered several moose on the highway just outside of Portobello, narrowly escaping a huge mishap. Jane first came into my life when Mark was about 12 years old. When he was 15, he went to live with her. I was at my wit's end and Jane came to my rescue. We became the best of friends and visited frequently from then on. Jane always made me feel at home and welcomed me like a part of the family. She played such a strong role in Mark's life and was like another parent to him. Even after I left and returned to Newfoundland, she and I always stayed connected and spoke often. I miss her terribly. And I often wonder, what would Jane say? What would her advice be? in this situation? We all know the answer to that question. This is how we're going to do it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Jane was my refuge in the storm. When my baby granddaughter died in vitro, it was Jane who welcomed me and took care of me as though through that most painful time. During times when Mark was in crisis and there were many, Jane was always there. I knew, I knew I could count on her. And so could my son Mark. She always saw beyond the disability. She was there to support him through the darkest of times, and I miss her so. There was one really funny moment. The deviled eggs story. Jane had organized a concert that was at the old church in Tesla. I was visiting at the time, and Jane gave me the job of preparing the deviled eggs. I remember looking for the vinegar and found some in her laundry room, and I thought that was kind of an odd place, but oh well. It was a vinegar bottle, nonetheless, so I followed Jane's instructions and made great tasting deviled eggs. Afterwards, I, I mentioned to Jane that I'd found the vinegar in, the old, in an odd place, and Jane says, oh, that was shackly cleaner, not vinegar. Oh, oh my. Anyway, the devil eggs had been gobbled up. No one seemed to be the worse for wear. And 
and I, I told Marcia, that's the Shake Lee dealer at the time, after the fact, and she said, well, it's Shake Lee. Uh, worst scenario is that someone might get a good cleaning out. <laughs> we laughed so much over this, and we never told another soul until today. <laughs> I have lots more stories and memories, but I'll better leave it at that. Thanks again. Wishing I could be there, but I am there with you in spirit. Who's next? There's got to be more dirt. <laughs> oh, I think we found a, found a sample. Do you know how to use this? Because there's a guy who... <laughs> I'm Maureen, and I'm Jane's cousin. And... This is, this is our, but she was, I just had to write things down because I won't be able to say what I want to say, but she was such a positive and forward-looking approach both to people and to life. She didn't spend time dwelling on what was in the past, but looked to the future and its possibilities. And always a solution was at hand, and I'm sure there are many people today here who have lived that with her as she told us what we should do next. I'll just tell you one story because it seems to embody all of the things that she did with, especially with young people. Um, my son Daniel was invited to Duke University to, in North Carolina to accept this award when he was 14 years old. And 1970, 1997. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of time travel. <laughs> Very close. Right. And, uh, you did have the we, time travel now. <laughs> a little bit tricky. We, I couldn't afford to go. And she says, of course we're going to go. She says, of course we're going to go. She says, we can drive and we can get cheap accommodation. This was before Airbnb. But you know, Jane could always find a bargain. And she said, we're going to do it. So off we went, got through the American border, and my car coasted to a stop on the other side and died. <laughs> the alternator was gone. The car wouldn't work. I said, OK, well, that's it. We tried. She said, no, 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 that's not it. We'll get a tow truck from Canada to come and get the car and we'll rent a car. And I said, Jane, that'll be too expensive to rent a car and drive all the way to North Carolina. No, no, I'll find one with unlimited mileage. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. And so we did. And it really was not very expensive. We did side trips on all these deep caves and we went into pan for gold somewhere else. We took the road less traveled through the mountains of I don't even know where, but she said it's going to end up somewhere, and we didn't have GPS, we just had some maps. Uh, we went to Washington, and to the Smithsonian on the way, we traveled to Duke, we went around, we went to the events. Then she said, well, Frances Ann, our cousin, lives in Georgia. It's not very far from here. I think it's another seven or eight hours from where we were. Seven hours there. I said, no, I have to get back to work. I haven't got another two or three days to go. And off we went. But that was the kind of adventure. Yes, we can do it. Let's imagine what we can do. Do. Let's see what the adventure is, uh, the experiences that we can give to everybody in our lives that will remember, they'll remember for a long time and, and be buoyed by what they, they saw and they did and, and the special attention that Jane gave to each one of those children in her life. And there were many of them. And you know, the Freezy Pops were <laughs> bought by the by the box full, because they were always more Freezy Pops, and every child knew. If you got to James, there was a Freezy Pop in your future.
just got a, an email from our cousin Michael, who lives in uh, Vancouver, and uh, he writes, I have a memory of Jane that has stuck with me since I was a teen. The summer I was 14, I spent a few weeks living in the Monday home in Corona. I had a great time cleaning the pool, cutting the grass, <laughs> hanging out with Jane. My parents firmly believed I was under the watch and care of my aunt and uncle, but it was Jane who was charged with my supervision. Jane taught me a lot about life during those weeks. She made sure I was entertained and well fed. She showed me how to dodge Sunday Mass. At one point she convinced the Sarnia Catholic School Board to hire me to laminate flashcards for teachers. Our wages were $2.15 an hour. Jane found out that this wage was not as much as had been promised. That's going to be a problem. So she mounted a full protest for the money. My father was on the school board. He could have lost his position over this. I'll never forget how she stood up in front of her peers and the adult supervisors to demand a higher wage for everyone. I remember Jane as a warrior, a force, a champion supporter of kids and youth. I'm happy that my own kids, Matthew and Andrew, came to know Jane during the summer holidays at Cummings Lake. We'll always miss her. Who's next? Oh, there we are. Yeah, I don't need to that big. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Gerd Spring from Germany. I don't speak Canadian English, I don't speak American English. I have learned uh, English at school 40 or 50 years ago, but it doesn't matter. We, are, we come nearly every year to your beautiful country, to Canada. We uh, have a colleges uh, not far from Jane's place and from here. And um, hopefully you understand my German English. Uh, yes. I'm not so very good, but I have a, my, room, my wife is here. She is a little bit shy. From, she is perfect in English. I'm, I speak good Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and um, 40 years we came here, but we built also a college together with our three sons. And um, 40 years ago, one of our sons, he met Jane. She was, everybody knows, very helpful, and she brought our son to um, uh, to London, Ontario, because he wanted to go to schools. He wants to go to schools there for half a year. Before he was here, half a, half a, a year at school. And, uh, and uh, uh, the next summer, we met her exactly here. In a, there was a party or a, a, a pig roast or whatever mm -hmm. you call it. And uh, Tim, our son, said, this is a nice woman. He brought me to, to London. And we met us and we were talking together. And from this time, actually, we were friends. And every time when we came in summer, she was one of the first lady friends who came to our place very hard, five kilometers through our property, uh, rough road, uh, touching rocks underneath because he has a flat car like we had also. And I told her, go not in the middle because there are rocks, go on the side where the, <laughs> where the branches are, but she, and she did it. And she always came when she came back from the zoo, from your, from your family, from her kids, from her friend, yeah, yeah. She, she, she came in, sometimes with a bottle of red wine, and we sit together, had lots of fun. I could, I could tell stories, thousands maybe, and she, 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 she brought us to, to Chicago. She had a friend there, and this guy was a. Very, very interesting guy uh, connected with very important people in the chess. Chess, uh, I don't, I forget his name. And we, she brought us in the best, best pubs, the best chess. It was really unbelievable. And then she, we invited her to come to, to Germany, and she came three, two or three weeks, and we went to Italy together, North Italy, and she's, I'm a photographer, she's a very good ph ph uh, photographer, and we 
we were in very old towns, little towns, and we took pictures uh, uh, and we showed each other, uh, look, hey, I have better ones. Than you. <laughs> 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 and we, had, we also climbed up the north of the falls, uh, the, the, what's the name? Aubrey Falls. Aubrey Falls. And she told me, we should go another way, because everybody goes this, and this way is, is actually not a way. We have to climb up. And I said, Jane, Jane, I don't know, I don't know. shall I <laughs> do have a rope to, to sit? No, no. And she, she went up, and it was, oh, deep down. I could look down, we were on the rock. It was the left side. Very, very hard. Uh, unbelievable. Um, we took very, very special photographs. And in, yeah, that's all I want to say. I actually, I want to say, hi, Jane. I have to thank you. You, you give us so much. Um, and now for us, when we heard that she is not alive anymore, and now we feel it since we are here, since two weeks we are here. <coughs> and it's, it's not anymore, for us, it's not anymore Canada, Canada like it was. We miss, it's different now, because we, we, we miss her. She, we, she, normally she would be here at Woodrow Lake, where we are, since maybe five times from now. And every second day she, she stopped and came in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I have to say. We miss her and we, we always, when we come to Canada, we will think of her. She was a very good person. Very yes. Thank you. Very much. Any more? I have a question. Yes. Who's going to take care of us now that Jane's going to <laughs> We need someone. Yeah. We'll set up something. It'll be very expensive, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, one. If there's nobody. Yep. Yeah. You go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We all know Jane likes to travel. You can put your mask on. So Jane took Matt and I to Chicago to see Jim, her friend. And we went to this Tundra thing with all these different cars and trucks. Well, her and Jim said they would be back and told us to meet them at a certain time. Four hours later, they didn't come back. <laughs> So we haven't been there before. We don't know what we're doing. So somehow we found a catalog that had our hotel room on it. So we brought it out to a cab driver and showed him. And he brought us. And when they came back, she realized that they forgot us. And she was just so proud that we made it back. <laughs> she left us there. That's a little challenge. <laughs> oh, well, you passed. <laughs> Okay, well now that I'm up here, um, I'm Amanda, I was 16 years old when I went into Jane's care and I had no idea what a beautiful experience that was going to be and, uh, and it was. Um, I've never been anywhere, never really done much, but that was about to change because I went to Chicago and I went to Traverse City, wherever Jane went, her little kids went with her. And um, me and Tamara really, for some reason, I don't know why, but we wanted to go to the Jerry Springer show in Chicago. <laughs> and so we went and again, Jane wasn't there to pick us up. And <laughs> we got lost on the bus. But once we made it back to our hotel room, she was really happy that we made it there, okay? <laughs> I've never had anybody in my life that protected me as much as Jane did. And she was always there for a phone call. I can still imagine her in my doorway. Hey, what are you cooking? What do you got cooking in there? And I, um, I will always be appreciative for the life that she gave me. 
and uh, I'm going to miss her very much. You forgot to mention we missed our bus stop three times. Yeah, and we missed our bus stop three times. That's very important that you all know that. <laughs>
who had been before this, running around and getting treats, he just stood and sat and watched Jane as this song was being played. It was the most beautiful spiritual moment I have ever experienced. And when, <laughs> this is the part that's truly Jane. So when that song was done, Jane said, Oh, Madeline and Reuben are trying to buy a house. Could you do a song for them? <laughs> and so she did. And she explained later it was a bit of a, a it was a bit of a mischief song where the creator would know if there was mischief going on and he would be able to make it all happen. An hour later, they called us and yes. They had bought a house. <laughs> so um, that is that is the last really Jane moment, um, and it was truly Jane right to the very end. So that's it. Yeah, I have one more thing to read, and I, I got this from Patty and Andy McKenzie a few days ago. Rose, because yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get yeah, through this or not. <laughs> Maybe you should start. Okay. I thought of you today, and I was missing that smile when you spoke of your grandchildren. I thought of you today, and I was missing pulling into your driveway and receiving your welcome greeting. I thought of you today, and I was missing the road trips that took us on adventures and filled our ears with laughter. I thought of you today, and I was missing the ideas you would come up with to keep a handyman busy. <laughs> I thought of you today, and was missing the beautiful meal served around the large table filled with people. I thought of you today and was missing the music nights and the fun we had listening to the instruments and voices. I thought of you today and I was missing sharing our family stories, our lives, and now our grief. I thought of you today and I was missing you to come and help the ladies eat the food that they've prepared <laughs> and coffee and water and please please uh oh please. I, I want to say something yes uh, sorry uh, this is yeah. the second time i have to speak my you know, uh, we had my wife had, had a good idea because of a bench uh, paul a friend of uh, jane maybe somebody knows him he died a few years ago, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and um, a chain organized and had the idea to build a bench and setting up on his, on her hill on the right side, the beautiful hill where you can climb up and look down to the, to the, the rocks. And Andrea said, we should put another bench with chain on the side of this or somewhere else, but because it was. Paul was a close friend to her. Yeah. Yeah. It would be an idea, maybe um, we collect a little bit of money, maybe it can't be very expensive. Yeah. It, I don't know if it's, we, we can do it by our own, Andrea, to, but maybe, I don't know. It's just an idea. I think we can make that happen. Yeah. 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 Why don't you put, put a cup up on the counter yeah. where the food is? <laughs> Because we always go up uh, to the hill and, and it's nice to sit on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if Jane was really involved, though, I, I think she would want a, a little gate at the bottom of the hill and you'd have to put a port. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we'll make it happen. Andrea. 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 And Jane would make it happen, like Maureen said to me. She would make Let's make a, yeah. we'll, and we'll, we, we, we'll charge to do that. We'll get that done. Now. I have an idea how to do it. We will get it done.
Thank you for Thank coming. You oh, I'll, I'll try to say something. Yeah. Jane and I have argued and disagreed with each other for over 60 years. But, um, this is something valuable. And the fact that we were a family, we stuck together. And just, I really, really miss her. The only real story I can tell about Jane was when we were in high school. And we lived out in the country. There was only one car for five kids to use. Rosemary was lucky, her boyfriend had a car. <laughs> the rest of us shared in the group being the driver. Philip was the driver. You were picked up within 20 minutes of when you expected to be Mark was the driver, he was on time every time. Jane was the driver, one night I sat on the porch with her dad at one o'clock in the morning and all he could say was, well boy, when are you going home? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm